Tatau um, e te whanau o Ngāti Rangiti, ngā uri o Rangiti, uh, ka nui te mihi, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Um, my name's Anthony Olson, for those of you who don't know me, um, that's my grandmother, Pātu. Um, she was a queer for this whare, and um, yeah, so it's sort of, we, we lived, our whanau lived um, down Manawahe Road, <coughs> And, um, you know, my dad and his brothers were all raised here. And they all went to the Catholic school. And, um, yeah, we used to come here with dad. My dad was a policeman, so we travelled around a bit um, where we lived. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm really happy to be home. So, um, as way of an introduction about today, is that um, this really is introducing some of the research that our research team had been undertaking. Um, it's giving you a bit of a context from a whakapapa perspective. It's not a definitive whakapapa wānanga, because if it was then, you know, this would continue on and there would be no eating and no one would leave here and there's a whole tikanga that goes with that. Um, but this is just a way of introducing our research and giving you some context for the corridor that's going to come, um, because a lot of the corridor for the whenua um, um, is within a context of whakapapa. So then you can kind of understand where everyone sits, all the tipuna sit, um, and what the context is in terms of time frame. Um, because that's one of the things that happens is that you hear a different corridor and then you kind of work out, well, where does that ancestor sit? So for example, just to give a real quick example, um, people talk about mahora, um, but a lot of people don't understand that there's three different mahora within that whakapapa. And so, you know, it's kind of really understanding what the context of that when you hear the corridor. Um, I'll introduce some of the um, things that we've actually found through the, Ma the Māori Land Court minutes. Um, there's a real opportunity during today to actually talk about your own whakapapa um, and raise any questions that you have around that. Um, we come across, when we're doing research, a lot of individual whānau whakapapa. <coughs> Um, through the Māori Land Court Minutes, um, and so it's just really an opportunity for you, not just me speaking, but for you to actually participate within the wānanga. So what I thought we'd do, and I've just been speaking to Tipene, is I thought what we'll do is just maybe just go round the room, and anyone who has anything they wish to actually achieve from today, um, specifically, will try and weave that into the day, and hopefully that can help you in terms of achieving what you want to do. Um, we have a loose framework in terms of an agenda for the day, but today's a long day, and we've done it that way for that reason. Um, so really, it's not just about standing up and saying, here's the whakapapa, see you later. Um, that's really about getting participation from you guys in terms of what you want to achieve and what you see happening, um, and how you'd actually like to actually receive information, um, especially around whakapapa and kōrero. For today, um, I've got... Kerry introduced himself earlier on. Um, Kerry put together um, a book lit um, that actually outlined um, Whakapapa for Ngāti Rangati as part of our mandating process. And um, essentially what happens when you're doing research um, and you're doing negotiating with the Crown, the Crown expect you to actually come up with primary sources. So essentially what I've done is, no disrespect to Kerry, I'd, took his whakapapa book and went back to the original source um, of that whakapapa and then actually have done the research from there. So we have a number of pieces of research that sit in the Māori Land Court Minute Book. So this is an example. This is a whakapapa given by Arama Karaka um, and that talks about mahi and his children. Um, but we have any number of these whakapapa. Um, this whole pile here is all excerpts from the Māori Land Court um, with whakapapa for Ngāti Rangiti. So part of the process was working with Kerry and with our negotiators around compiling um, all of that whakapapa into some format. So what I'll be doing today um, on our behalf is presenting 
um, whakapapa to you, it is by no means um, limited to this. You can imagine that there's a huge number of lines that come from those children from mahi. Um, and it's, it's essentially the corridor that I'll be giving today is essentially that it is through that line from mahi that who we are Ngāti Rangiti. Um, and so, you know, and that's where I'm leaving the floor open all day um, for Pātai, for any questions that you might have. You know, um, it's, a, it's a normal thing at Hui is that um, no question is a dumb question. If you have that in your head, then here's the forum for you to actually ask those questions. So please just absolutely feel free. And, you know, if you don't get it the first time and you need to, me to explain it two or three other times, kate pai. That's what today's about. Okay, you need to go away from today feeling confident that at least at some level that you're starting to understand, you know, our whakapapa and our tipuna. I mean, for me, I'm in incredibly fortunate is that because I do this research, I feel like I sit with those tipuna all the time. Um, and, you know, and I feel kind of a lot of aroha um, for them and some of the decisions that they made in their lifetime, especially when Pākehā arrived. Um, some of those were hard choices and hard decisions they made on behalf of our tribe, and I have a lot of aroha for them. Um, so anyway, so if I kind of get a bit emotional sometimes, it's like because these, these people did an incredible job for this tribe, um, and, um, and sometimes they didn't get it quite right, but hey, who does? So anyway, so, we'll, so what I'm going to do is um, I talk to Kerry and I talk to our negotiators about you know, where I might start. So this first whakapapa, the one in your book, and I'm following essentially the handout that you've got, the first of those is the only piece of whakapapa that I'll actually refer going past Rangitihi. Now, I've started with Tamata Kapua there but it's all of those ones off the waka we can whakapapa to. Rā Toroirangi, Oro, Māka, Tia, Tamata Kapua, all of those ones we whakapapa to, especially in the Kaingaro with Nā Toroirangi, Oro and Māka, and a number of the whakapapa actually then talk about those ancestors. They say, oh, the line that I'm choosing is through the Māka line, or the Whakapapa I'm choosing is the Ngā Te Roirangi line, um, and that's what they talk about. Today, um, we'll just touch on that briefly, but really what I want to do is come down to Rangitihi, the man. So if we can start there, um, and you have a number of kaumātua who are way more qualified than me to talk about pre Ngā Te Rangitihi. So pre Rangatihi the man, Tamata Kapua, all of those, there's Tipene and any of these ones that are sitting here are way more qualified to me to, than me to talk about those Tipuna. So really what I want to start at is Rangitihi. And so what happens is Rangitihi is living at a pass site at Makitu, and that's where he starts his whānau. So the first two children, they're born there, and then he builds his pā, pā kotore, on the Kaituna River, which is past Paingaroa going towards Rotorua. And the rest of the children are born there. Now three generations of, na of Rangitihi, all of his children and his grandchildren, as far as the research is concerned, and I'm only talking about the research, all of them were born there and lived there. And it wasn't until the third generation that they started to move out. Now, there's different corridor about that movement. Um, the corridor that I have researched would show that Rangitihi builds pā at Rotuiti on the peninsula between Lake Rotorua and Lake Rotuiti, just south of there, as you're going up that hill past the, past the hotel. Um, up in there, he builds pā sites up in there, and all his children, he, is, he gives them land in and around Rotorua. But essentially the kids all want to have their own life and so they start to move out from there. <coughs> so we come to, um, specifically I'll talk about the corridor for Rangiao here. 
So Rangiao here builds a pa, Ngā Uhu, which is um, at Waiti Stream at Lake Rotuiti. So by Tapuai Haruru there. Okay, so that big that Waiti Stream, the little stream there, that big hill in behind Waiti Stream was his pa site Ngā Uhu. And he built that with his eldest son, Taua Hoi Hoi Waka. Or Rākau Hoi Hoi Waka was another name that he was given. And they're living there. And even after Rangiao here leaves that pa and moves into Tarawera, Taua Hoi Hoi Waka and all of his children occupy that pa. And you'll find those descendants, according to the research, essentially are now part of Ngāti Hinikura. So the past, the, the, the marae that's there, Hinikura, that's the descendants of Taua Hoi Hoi Waka sit in there, on Waiiti Stream, beneath the pa site. So Rangiao here moves with his other son, Mahi, into Tarawera. They have a sister, Taua Hoi Hoi Waka's the oldest, Mahi's the second, and the sister, Hinetai, she marries one of Raukawa's grandsons, Pipito. And that whakapapa is Te Rauparaha. So those uh, Raukawa Kitatonga, that's come through that line. Oh, kia ora. So the corridor that I, that I know from the research and from um, generally what's known in Ngāti Rangitihi in the same way that Rangi Ao here inherited the mana of Rangitihi, Mahi inherited the mana of Rangi Ao here. So he had five sons, Rongamai, Ihu, Pikiao, Mokai Kitariki, so Tukaipia, Mokai Kitariki, and Tuahakura. So Mokai Kitariki, he gets killed as a young man by Tutanakai. His wife marries Pikiao's son. to keep the whānau tight. But it's those children that are the core ancestors for us as Ngāti Rangiti. Outside of that, there are two other significant children of Rangitihi that re are reflected in our whakapapa. The first of those is Rākaiao, and that comes down the Murimanu Tu Whakaoruahu line. And the other one is Apumuana, and that's Rangiti Kahira. It gets even more complex because Te Ao Feoro comes through the Tu Hurangi line. She marries her uncle, and they have Rangiti Kahira. And part of the corridor um, that we've researched would indicate that there's as many um, of at least five siblings for Rangiti Kahira. And all of those ones actually end up marrying into the lines of mahi. So when we talk about calling ourselves Ngāti Rangitihi, and no one would challenge that because essentially those lines, those mahi lines, are the lines that reflect all of the children of Rangitihi, the man. But essentially, the, the, um, I think this might be the second handout, is it? So this is this one. This is Pipito here. Even though I can't read it, I know this. I'll put it together. This is Pipito here. This is the Rokawa. Takihiku, the son, and, and Pipito marrying Hinetai. This is Toa Hoi Hoi Waka, and these are the three sons. These, thrun, these three sons were mischief. Um, they stole a sacred inanga net from a cave belonging to Ngāti Makino. And um, Ngāti Makino came and they burnt it. And... Um, and they kind of like, you know, we're, we're Taua Hui Hui Waka's grandsons, who's going to touch us? But Ngāti Makino came up to, to give them the bash, basically. <laughs> and when they realised who they were, they, they couldn't do anything about it. They weren't about to kill Taua Hui Hui Waka's um, grandsons. Um, and so 
what happened was they <laughs> did a big piru piru or a haka on the beach at Tapawai Harudu and that's how it got its name. So um, that connection to Ngāti Mākino is, is, the, is the one through Rākau Hikitara. So there's a bit of whakapapa out here. We've got, I haven't done this one to Te Rauparaha here, but that's a well-known whakapapa amongst, amongst Raukawa Kita Tonga. Um, but it's these, real, it's these lines here. <coughs> it's, here's mahi. Rangiti, kahira, here are the children here. And there's a sum of the descent lines. As I said, it's not definitive, it's not the final whakapapa, that's not all of it. There's a lot, lot more. But this is what I can cram onto the page without going into overload. Now at the bottom you'll see I've made some notes just to kind of really start to aid to understand the interweaving. So two whakaorawahus, two elders' daughters married rongamai nihu. So that's the same line. That Tufaka Oruahu line is also strongly in Nati Tarafai. So part of my Whakapapa personally as I come down through Muri Manu Tufaka Oruahu, through Huikai, <coughs> to, a, to his son called Kado, who marries Umutahi's daughter, Kuyarangi. So that's the hook then across into Umutahi as well. So Tarafai, Nati Rangatihi, and Ngāti Umutahi are very, very closely interlinked by Whakapapa. Mm. So when you have kaumātua sitting on the pai at Umutahi and sitting on the pai here, it's not, I've heard someone say, oh, there's kōrana because there's not enough kaumātua. Actually, no, th they can sit on both pai because essentially they, they you know, have very strong interrelationships with Whakapapa. But you'll get some idea through this Whakapapa, the complexity of who we are. I've also extrapolated out here, spread out, to give you an example of tiunga. Three, the three wives from tiunga. So that's quite a significant hapu in Ngāti Rangitihi. So this is the minute... This is out of the minutes about Hawane. So this was um, compiled. It was a long-winded story, and you've seen some of that in the newsletter. We did a little story of about a year ago, I think it was, um, about how Hawane came to be. In the beginning, it was a, gr a, a, a gift from the Prime Minister, John Balance, when he died, his underlings decided that he'd been overly generous and said, no, no, it wasn't a gift, it was a lease. When Ngāti Rangati said, no, it was a gift and we're not going to pay the lease, they came to an arrangement where they were going to swap land at Pōkuhu. So that's how we lost our land at Pōkuhu, was that they agreed um, for that swap to happen. But originally, it was actually a gift from the Prime Minister, as he was, at the end, um, after the eruption. Didn't come to fruition until 1910. So there was arguing to and fro, to and, to, to and fro, Rauriti being the, the, the main person who was actually <coughs> arguing on behalf of Ngāti Rangiti. Um, finally, they did the swap. The five hapū are given as Ngāti Mahi, Ngāti Hinehua, Ngāti Ihu, Ngāti Hinerangi and Ngāti Tionga. That becomes important because you start looking through and here's Ihu. You know where Mahi is. Um, you know where Tionga is. Now Hinerangi and Hinehua are actually hapu. They're the Ngāti Rangiti hapu but through the complexities of uh, other hapu that became part of us, for example, Ngāti Hinewai. So the, 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 the bit that I want 
you to get from this slide is this bit here. <coughs> is the bit from Rangiao here, Mahi, two of his siblings, and his boys. That's it at this stage. The rest of it is just to give you an indication of how that whakapapa builds, because essentially what I want to do today is actually do a little bit of a top-down approach, because there's a lot of people that I've spoken to who know their parents, their grandparents and great-grandparents sometimes, but from there on, how do we actually connect back to the tipuna, they don't know. So really what I want to do is actually start to build from the top down and then arrive at a place where someone goes, oh, that's where I hook in. Um, but as I said, you know, after lunch, there's a lot of time this afternoon that it's not me talking, it's actually you asking me questions, this is my whakapapa, this is what I don't know, how do I actually get here? And I've got, a, as I said, I've got a whole lot of whakapapa here that can help you. Um, or if I don't have it here, I know where to get it. Mm -hmm. So really, that's the first part, is just saying that um, according to Ngāti Rangitihi, and it's telling our story, Mahi inherited the mana of Rangiao here, who had inherited the mana from Rangitihi, and it's that line that is essentially who we are today. There's one of Mahi's sons was Pikiao, and so that's Mahi's son, that's not Pikiao the Nazi Pikiao from Rotiti, that's no, no, no. Pikiao Mahi's son. So yep. I'm just making sure everyone realises that's not the Pikiao line there, that, or that's our Pikiao line, not yep. Nazi Pikiao. Exactly, Tipene, and, and Ehu and Pikiao sometimes are referred to Ehu or Mahi and Pikiao or Mahi saying it's that ihu son of Pikiao, of, of Mahi, and not ihu, the other ihu, because there's another ihu in Te Aro, and it's not, and it's Pikiao or Mahi, not Pikiao 1 or Pikiao 2. And that's Ngāti Pikiao, that's Te Arawa Pikiao. Different person. And even Ngāti Hinerangi, you know, Ngāti Hinerangi is a hapu of Ngāti Pikiao, but we've got our own Ngāti Hinerangi. So it becomes a bit confusing about what, which one are you talking to. So the research, generally, um, the, the kōrero in Te Arawa was Rātoru at the eldest, and Tūhurangi was the youngest, and they vied for their, the, 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 the succession for their father. And depending on who you talk to, one of them got it. The corridor generally um, through Ngāti Rangiti Kaumatu, so we're talking um, Aramakaraka, Hākopa Takapau, Mekaere Hira Taunga, Nihita Kaipara, Huta Tangi here. You know, they're significant kai corridor for our iwi through the Māori land court. Now, when you compile those corridors, essentially what they're saying is that, um, in fact, um, um, Raureti, he gives a different order for the children. His order is to Hanangi, he's not the youngest. It's a different order. And so if you kind of look at that as a different order, then essentially what you're saying is that how can it be, have been the eldest and the youngest vying because they're not the right person. Um, so then when you go through the research, what you find is that um, it would seem, and this is a little bit of interpretation, I have to admit, but I mean, there, there is corridor that sits around this in the Native Land Court Minute. Um, and essentially what it says is that um, there was no agreement um, amongst the sons of Rangitihi um, about who was going to inherit the mana. And so therefore the mana went to Rangiao here as the Tohunga son. And he's a Tohunga son because on the pohaki out here, he's carrying the three baskets of knowledge and that reflects his, ro his, his position as tohunga. And it was under that mana that he inherited the mana of rangiti. And he passed it on to his son. Now, it doesn't say in the research why Toa Hoi Hoi Waka, as the, as the tuakana, didn't inherit the mana of, of rangiao here, but it definitely says that Mahi inherited the mana of rangiao here. It doesn't say why, 
but it definitely says that. So um, there's another part to this is talking about Ngāti Rākaiao and Ngāti Apumuana. So, you know, there's very strong interrelationships of Ngāti Rangitihi with both of those tipuna, sons of, of Rangitihi, um, and, and even across all the other children, um, with the exception of um, Tauruao, until I was talking to Kerry. So Tauruao, the girl, she married into, is it Whakatoa here, Kerry? Um, and in actual fact, there are very strong connections with Ngāti Rangitihi and Whakatoa here, even going back to Tauruao. So I didn't know that until I was talking to Kerry, and he showed me um, some, some kōrero in the Māori Land Court minute um, about that. But uh, so ev now I'm confident that every single one of those children from Rangitihi are reflected in our whakapapa. They were all, of those, all of those uri married back into our lines of mahi. That's all I was trying to achieve here, not confuse you or overload you, but just to show you how complex that could be. Oh, um, Anthony, I've just got one question. All right. You know, kia ora, Perry. Kia ora, Kathy. Um, I'm interested to know when we started um, calling ourselves Ngāti Rangitihi and or when others started referring to us as Ngāti Rangiti. Have you got evidence of when that so, might have started to occur? So, um, Arama Karaka is getting up and saying in 1879 or 1880, um, you know, who he is. And he said, and he said you know, that the split between Tūhurangi and Ngāti Rangitihi, for example, um, happened in the time of Mahi. So that's all he says. He doesn't give any wider context. He gives some reasons why that happened, um, but essentially he doesn't give any context about, about when we started being called by that name. But he said he refers to us as Ngāti Rangitihi in that time. Well, he, no, you know, he's presuming in the time of Mahi, when Mahi was alive, that's when we were, we were being identified separately as Ngāti Rangiti. And Ngāti Rangiti here in Tūhaurangi was in the time of Mahi. Okay, thank you. What was the time of Mahi? Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing is that if you're, you know, it's really hard to answer that question because you can go based on whakapapa before 20 years a generation, 15 years a generation. Pākehs have their own kind of perspective of how long we've been here. Um, you know, it kind of just really, it really depends. But I mean, generally, I think people would, would think that was somewhere around the 1400s, Kerry? Rangiti? Earlier? Later? But really, we don't definitively know. So this is um, whakapapa that we gave through the CNI, so the Central North Island. So um, those of you in the iwi that don't know what happened there, um, you can talk to Ken and Tipune, <laughs> um, and they'll give you a more in-depth version of this. I'll just do a snapshot. So. When the Central North Island forest claim came up, Ngāti Rangiti were deemed through some process that I'm not aware of, because it was before my time, um, that Ngāti Rangiti were about 3% of that whenua. Um, in my time, um, since the board employed me as the hapaio, um, we put together this research um, and we went through the mana whenua hearings. The end outcome of those mana whenua, whenua hearings was that in actual fact Ngāti Rangiti were more than 20% of the kāingaroa. So, and this is one of the whakapapa that, um, that we gave as a team um, in that hearing. So just let me take you through it. Um, 
Aroha mai, this is complex. Again, what are the key messages? I just really want you to actually have a look at um, the red bits, particularly. Yeah, right. Left hand side starts with marker. So he's a contemporary Nga Tororangi, Oro, Maka, Tia, Tamatakapua, plus a number more on the Arawa canoe. That Arawa waka, according to the research, was at Makatu, but it actually came here. And those tipuna got off. And they went inland. And we know that Ngā Tororangi went to Ruapehu. And the others were around. Um, and Oro and Maka especially. So you actually find Oro and Maka in um, Whakapapa Ford and um, Ngāti Manua, Ngāti Whare, Ngāti Rangiti, Tu Whare Tō Ki Te Tonga, Tu Whare Tō at Taupo. So really just giving you a con context that, but if Whakapapa comes down to Mahora number one. <coughs> so you can see Tionga's mother. The second line is one not so well known, that's the upper line. So one of the names, not necessarily the Ngāti Rangati name, but one of the names for the Tarawera Falls. You know, so Tuwhare Tōki Kawere talk about a little waterfall on the side of Putawaki called Te Tākanga i o Apa, meaning where, where um, Apa was kicked by a moa. So they'll say, you know, ko putawaki te maunga, ko te takanga i o apa te wai, te wai o apa te awa, ko fiti atu te moana nui akiwa. So that's their kōrero at Tūwhare Tōki Kawara. But that's talking about apa, but you can see that apa features in our whakapapa. Then I've given the core whakapapa from Rangi Tihi, Rangi Ao here line. And then I've talked about Ronga mai ihu pikiao mo kai ki tiriki tu kaipia tu ahakura going across. And really what I was doing was giving the context for the kai kōrero for Ngāti Rangiti. So you go to the end of those lines and you'll see Arama Karaka, Nihe Te Kaipara, Mekaira Hira Taunga and Hākopa Takatau. So any of those tipuna are yours, then you're there. So this is the line I'm talking about, that's the core Ngāti Rangiti line here, down to Arama Karaka. Here are the children coming across here. You've got Makaire Hiratonga's line down here. This is, you know, Fire Tiao again, so just linking across into here. And Hakopa Takapo over here. Now, what I've done is I've given Aramakaraka's up in Moana line. It's just there for your information. And as you, hopefully, you can take this book and you can actually then put yourself in where you sit and you can see that you'll have multiple lines back to the tipuna. So the story I'll give, which is, is an interesting story, because this is a corridor that I had, one, probably the last corridor I had with my father before he passed away, was he was telling me the corridor about Te Rama Apukura. And at the time, Te Rama Apukura was the Araki of Umutahi at Te Umuhika on the Braemar Road, you know, Waikamihi stream. The kōrero is that Tionga killed Te Rama Apukura because he had actually killed his daughter Mahora. Now, what I said to my father is, Hey, how can Tionga come to the Pātū Watawata Umutahi and kill the Paramount Chief? Just like that. <coughs> how is that possible? So I give that kōrero, and Dad couldn't answer me, but I, I believe I've actually under, you know, got that reasoning you know, from the research now, and I feel confident about that. 
The thing is that what happened was that Ngāti Rangitihi were significant on the Tarawera. Not just to get up and down the river, but actually in terms of occupation. And it was those whakapapa connections that actually linked them to other iwi, or hapu, that were up and down the Tarawera River. But my research would clearly indicate that other than what I'd been told previously, that I oh, know you might guys are on the Tarawera River, but just to get from, from the lake to the sea, and that was all. That's not reflected in the research. There's a, there's a, um, there's a, um, a, a Crown Grant land, Lot 30, called Pukeroa, um, and that's um, up by um, Tumaro. So, and there's a whole corridor about how we lost that land. But essentially, even though it was a Crown Grant, on the face of it, you kind of go, oh, it was an award for military service. But when you actually go back in the research, what you actually find was they were actually granting land back that was originally Ngāti Rangiti because Ngāti Rangiti are already living there. So actually, historically, Ngāti Rangiti were living at places like that. We might have lost the corridor about that occupation, but the research clearly shows it's like Hohen there. You know, yes, it might have en ended up being a gift, but Ngāti Rangiti people were living there. And that's before the eruption, that's be before the Battle of Kau Kauroa. Even right back in 1860, we can show Ngāti Rangiti occupying significant lands in and around the Tarawera River. And we see that reflected when Arama, you know, when in the compensation court, what happens is Arama Karaka, he makes significant claims on behalf of Ngāti Rangiti in and around the Rangataiki swamp. What happens is the Crown loses his application. And by the time they realised they'd made an error and lost his application, they'd already allocated the land to other iwi. So, you know, we start to see that actually, hang on, this is a lot more complex than, than anyone ever explained to us previously. So, short answer is, up and down the Tarawera River, Ngāti Rangiti occupied, not just passed through. Um, my academic background is I'm a geographer, <laughs> and I've gone to a lot of these places and stood on that place and looked at the corridor about what's being given and can I see, what can I see from that place. And that actually makes you feel a lot more connected um, to know that that happens. And so, you know, part of what Donna and I have been talking about is really around, you know, really taking us out on Hikoi, taking us to some of these places and standing us on some of those places and then giving the corridor. And then you can see the context of what happened and why. Um, and Ken and I have had some conversations because, you know, we still had this, we still had this corridor about, um, you know, um, where, did, where did the Battle of Puke Kaikahu take place? You know, and you've had a significant change in the physical landscape because the mountain erupted and buried some of those places. So, I mean, where are those places now? You know, so, I mean, it's difficult sometimes to do that, but, I mean, you know, you can kind of look at the corridor and you can kind of work it out. Um, but it's actually standing on those places and having this corridor um, which really, really puts you in contact with, you know, the context of that. So next page is just one line of whakapapa. So there's a, there's a really co a good corridor that sits behind this. So this is about how Ngāti Hinewai are a hapu of Ngāti Rangiti. So as you'll see from there, it starts at marker, so we're already related <laughs> way back then. But it comes down to it, um, Hayanui coming to that. Um, it's not Marohi, it's Repe. Marohi is Ngāti Rangiti. So what happens is that um, Mahi got killed by Ngāti Hinewai. And his sons, obviously, weren't happy about that. And they went to try and give Ngāti Hiniwai, you know, revenge for killing their father. But his, his brother, Tawa Hoihuawaka, said, no, leave it to me. So the boy said, really? And then he goes, yep, leave it to me. And this is in the, in the minutes. 
what he told them to do was to build a whare, a brand new whare. He sent his daughter, was his daughter, wasn't it, Kerry, to Repe and said, you're to marry Repe, who's Ngāti Hinuai. Now there was, it seems there was something had happened previously, but it's not actually said in a minute, but it's really interesting that why would, why would Taua Hoi Hoi Waka send, Repe, uh, send his daughter to this particular ancestor in Ngāti Hinuai? <coughs> when he had ulterior motives. Anyway, he built, they built the whare and they invited Ngāti Hinewai to open it at the opening. And I know this doesn't sound very nice, but when Ngāti Hinewai were in the whare, Taua burnt the whare down. And those of Ngāti Hinewai that did escape, they ran after them and killed them. Now the only ones that were left were Repe, and his wife, because Taua Hoi Hoi Walker had told him and his wife to take their children out flax cutting for the day <laughs> and not come to the opening of the whare. And so after that, Ngāti Hinewai then became a hapu of Ngāti Rangiti. They were absorbed into Ngāti Rangiti. So that's just showing you the whakapapa. So there's a corridor, and here's a whakapapa. So this is part of the research that we're doing, is not just doing it, you know, oh, that's a nice story, but actually linking it to whakapapa and kōrero. So the next whakapapa is talking a bit about taua hoi hoi waka. And here we have some descent down to, um, maybe some of you might have a whakapapa to rameka. So rameka, the rameka's are generally at tūwhare toa ki te tonga at taupo, but actually Ramek is a Ngāti Rangiti and that's through Te Arero, who was a brother to Te Onga. So again, what I was just trying to achieve in this particular whakapapa was actually starting to actually show how far down we can come and if you can just show, oh that's my tipuna, then you automatically get all of this whakapapa. It's just finding where you hook in. And as I said, we'll do that this afternoon. So the next two pages are out of what's called the Journal of Polynesian Society, which is another piece of research um, that you can go and have a look at, and that you can do that all online. So the first of those is um, He Tangi Mō Te Kuru Te Marama. So this is um, a lament and, um, you know, um, Tiaki Tomika um, was one of those people, but um, really, you know, this again indicating people like Rauriti Moko Nuirangi. Just giving, and they give the first part of it is they're giving the compo the main composers, Whakapapa there. Otini Kaipara, I heard Kaipara mentioned here, so that's part of that Fano. But it's the next part below that. that is the bit that I'm wanting to show you, which is this rangitihi rangiau here mahi ronga mai te apiti line. So then talking about it, moho nui rangi and toki ponamu, <coughs> is those children, te kuru o te marama, kaipara, paido, and parirotutu. And parirotutu's got the little asterisks and that's right at the bottom of that, you'll see a little bit there. And that ruihi, her husband, Te Whetu Pairata, that was my great-grandmother's first husband. So after Rui, he died, he married Whareraupo. And his father was Te Pairata. So Kerry, um, his line is that Kaipara Tafio Pitara, that's his line. Kerry, just here. Paido, you know that's Tanida, Paido, and Rauti Mokorina. So I've got big whakapapa here, a succession whakapapa. I've got that here if anyone wants to know about that line. 
And of course, Ngā Karauna, Elf, Alfred Warbrick, Albert Warbrick, I should say, that's a well known line as well amongst Ngāti Rangiti. The next page is a Tuhaurangi Tiarawa lament. But we'll see once again that Raurete Moko Noerangi and Kepa Eho, they contribute to that. So Kepa is generally associated with Ngāti Tarawhai, but I have Whakapapa here that shows that Kepa also had a Ngāti Rangiti Whakapapa. And they're talking about a woman of Ngāti Uruhina. And Kerry can give you the definitive kōrero about Uruhina, the person, but generally for to claim her ex exclusively to herangi, I would I would say that I have kōrero that shows that she's as much Ngāti Rangitihi as to herangi. The bit here goes back to a kōrero that we were just having previously um, around um, te Rā Mapakura. <coughs> and at the end of this, this lament, this is, the, this is the translation, and it's not, not by no means the definitive translation because I've read the Māori version, and it's not quite the same. <laughs> um, and, but here we talk about um, the crossing at Tumutara, and that was a battle site. There was a pa Ngāti Rangitihi pa site there, and there was a battle between Ngāti Rangitihi and Ngāti Tiapiti, hapu of Tuhaurangi. It's generally said it was a battle of, you know, from Ngāti Rangitihaurangi against Ngāti Awa, but actually it was Ngāti Rangitihi and Tiapiti, hapu of Tuhaurangi, that joined together because they were cousins. Um, that fought Ngāti Awa and specifically Te Rama Apakura at the Battle of Tumutara. And it's referring to that. So Tumutara, when you're going up towards the falls or the outlet, you know, as you're going up, you come to the part where you can actually go either continue on to the falls, or you can go across the bridge, across the Tarawera and go up to the outlet. That's Tumutara. That's the crossing right there. And just on the other side, on the on the on the um, on the Tarawera side, on the Maunga side, um, that was the pass site for Ngāti Rangiti there. So here we say, at the ford, the crossing at Tumutara, long was the struggle before the fort fell and Te Rama was secured. So that's when that happened. But it's really interesting, this next one, and there's an interpretation of this, but when you actually read the corridor, it's really interesting to kind of know, mm, it's not, I don't know, because you could actually interpret it a different way. So it says here, quite interestingly, perhaps it is not the youngest of Papa Faranui, who swallowed the star on the moon. What they're talking about, the star on the moon, swallowing the star on the moon, is, is, is inheriting mana. So it's just, again, what you've got in these native land court minutes, and it's a huge thing you have to be very careful about, is you're talking about a Pākehā who's learnt Māori, who's listening to our tūpuna and translating te reo into English. And so there's limitations in that. As long as you understand that there's limitations in this corridor, not from the tūpuna that gave the corridor, but in terms of the scribing of it, just as long as you kind of keep that in mind and keep a little bit of an open mind, then you're the right person to read this kind of corridor because it just means that you keep an open mind, you don't, aren't fixated on a particular interpretation. And you'll get people like, with the greatest respect, um, researchers like Angela Ballara, who are, you know, held up as being quite significant, um, researchers for Māori kōrero, um, who provide interpretation of these minutes. I wouldn't necessarily interpret it that way. And that doesn't, that's no disrespect to her, it's just that I have a different interpretation of that same corridor. And if you go back and have a look at the Māori version, I'm by no means a fluent speaker, but you kind of go, well, that doesn't mean that. <laughs> so why are you saying that? 
So as long as you actually have an understanding of that, then reading minutes is, is really a beautiful thing because you're actually transported back in time and you can actually walk around the rohe with these people as they give their kōrero. So what we'll do is that's kind of really the booklet. Really what I want to do, <laughs> I've got lots of stuff here, but I'm really keen to get feedback from all of you about what you wanted to get from today because I'm blown away that you're all here. That's really that's just so cool from my perspective. Um, and you know we're going on a journey together now, so I feel much more connected with all of you in, in that way. So I'm really keen to get feedback from you. What do you want to actually get out of this journey? Um, and just really so let's just before we got morning tea in half an hour. So let's just actually maybe start that that quarter door now. Anything that I've talked about. If you want to ask questions about it, or you have a particular question around your whānau whakapapa, or a particular perspective that you want to share, or have a koirero, or get information about. So that book was what Kerry put together for the mandate. So it's got a number of whakapapa in here. Um, expanded way out from what I've given. So, you know, that's available. So if anyone wants a copy of that booklet. Um, so th oh, that's just um, Ngā Kawai Whakaheke o Ngāti Rangati. Our Ancestral Ties in Perpetuity. And Kerry was the, was the author for that. And we can get copies of that. Yes. And Kerry's done significant other whakapapa connection, connecting whānau. Um, not just his own, you know, that kaipara line. So you'll see uh, here. Some of you would have seen this piece of whakapapa. I know some of the whānau have that piece of whakapapa. Again, then just tying everyone, you know, all of those iwi together to Ngāti Rangiti, um, and especially um, down that Niheta line. But I mean, there's all of this is available as resource um, to you. One question I've got, however, is does anyone have difficulty knowing how to compile their whakapapa? Being able to read it? Yeah? <laughs> okay. So really the best way of starting and how I started, because Dad didn't tell me anything, on purpose, <laughs> you go and find it, and then I'll fill in the gaps for you, was his corridor to me. So it was just simply me, my dad, and his brothers. So there was Uncle Cliff, who just passed away in November last year, was the eldest, born in 1927. Then there was Uncle Neil, he was <coughs> used to work with Eric Henry here in the butcher shop, six foot six, you couldn't miss him. <laughs> then there was Uncle Fred, who lived in Rotorua, married um, Miriama Eru. Then there was my father, and then there's my uncle Chris, who's still alive. He 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 lives. He's um, husband to um, uh, Penny Sampson, um, up at um, Ngāti Manu and Ngāti Whare. So they live in Te Whaiti. From there, from my father back, so that's his <coughs> mother. Okay, her first husband was Dan Savage, Rawinia Patterson's older brother. And then when he died, she married the Pākehā quarryman of the Maratā quarry called Bill Olson. That's my grandfather. Her mother was Whare Raupō. So she was uh, Whare Raupō Rinata or Whare Raupō, Whare Raupō Te Huakiwi. Okay, so her, her second husband, her first husband was Te Whetu Pairata. Her second husband was Hori Pāwa, who was the chief at Pahipoto. Okay, Whare Raupo's father was Wai Parapara Renata Te Huakiwi, or Wai Parapara Renata, and his wife was Rawinia the second. Her father was Hohaia Te Taiki. So what you're doing is you're just simply just going backwards and just going, who's... Because Dad refused to actually let me learn Whakapapa Tautahi, single lines, because he said, what? He said, these kids are immaculate conception. Where's the, where's the wife? Where's the husband? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So he'd make me, force me to actually do the whakapapa, husband and wife, husband and wife, husband and wife. By the time you get to about the fourth generation, it's getting really wide. <laughs> um, but essentially, that's how you compile it. So really, um, if you do it that way, on, you know, for me, I sort of cut, cut off about half my whakapapa because they're parking on the side. Um, but I mean, even on the Māori side, it gets quite wide quite quickly. Um, but essentially, what you, initially what I would recommend is that you look for one line that you can hook on to the Ngāti Rangatihi Whakapapa and then there you are, and then you can look for the other ones as well. But just, you know, mum and dad, grandma and grandpa, great-grandma, great-grandpa, and just do it as a tree like that going back until you find where you hook on. And it, does, it won't take long. Four generations, maybe, five generations, and you'll be in. As a researcher, you query, and what I mean by that is, in a, in a formal sense, you actually research different avenues of, of information. So you've got Māori Land Court Minutes, you've got the Journal of Polynesian Society, you've got um, the archives, you've got the Turnbull Library, um, you've got um, Ancestry.com, you've got um, other avenues that you can go to online to actually give that. Now, as long as you're understanding that there is a person who has compiled that whakapapa in Ancestry.com, for example, and they may not necessarily have got it right because they might only have, they might know, absolutely know their line and they've actually put a couple of people on that they've heard about and it might not be the right order. As long as you understand that, then all of that information is available to you, and a lot of it's online now. And you just build it from there. Yeah, yeah. Ancestry.com. Um, what's the other genealogy? Like the Mormon one. I can't think. There's another one online that you can go on to that is um, that the um, the Church of Latter Day Saints. They have that their website, and it's got a lot of um, fuckapapa on there. Um, but I think definitively what you do is you actually, the more sources that you can get for a whakapapa, then the more confident that you are that that's actually the right whakapapa. Yeah. So there's two, there's two separate things. So, um, Perry... Yeah. So Pe Perry and I have had this conversation, so... Um, there's two different bits of corridor that comes out of the research. Up until about a month ago, the only corridor that I'd actually had about Ngāti Mahi was that it was that line from Pikiao. Was generally Ngāti Mahi. But since then, but since that time, I've actually now found other research that I was telling you about the other day, which actually shows that Arama Karaka gets up and actually says, I'm Ngāti Mahi, separately, and then he says, and I'm also Pikiao. So he's distinguishing mahi from Pikiao. So again, now that creates something a little bit different because that changes the context. But up until that point, there's three pieces of research that show, that say that Ngāti mahi are the ones descended from Pikiao. But here we have a piece of research from Arama Karaka who's distinguishing himself as Ngāti mahi and separately as Ngāti Pikiao. The thing is that if you're talking about Ngāti mahi coming from mahi the man, then really every, everyone descended from those children are Ngāti Mahi. Um, so I, I think the, the first thing is just want to just, sorry, just want to just talk, talk about this Ngāti Rangiti thing. Now, one of the things that I was told and that I have heard is that Ngāti Rangiti get its name from the Rangitihi Kahira. Now, I can hold my hand on my heart and I can say this research in this corridor says absolutely not that we are Ngāti Rangitihi from Rangitihi the man yeah. and in actual fact Arama Karaka says we could have actually been called Ngāti Apumwana but we chose the line of Rangitihi and that's how we got our name nothing to do with Rangitihi <laughs> Kahira because I've actually, you know, people have told me oh no, you know, outside of Ngāti Rangitihi oh no, you're Ngāti Rangitihi Kahira and I can say that there's research here significant research that says that that's not correct
It's the, it's the interrelationship of whakapapa. So one of the interpretations has always been that this Ngāti Rangiti weren't here. But the, re the research has shown that Rākaiao lived here for a time, before he moved home, but he did live here. He just wasn't at Okataina. He was actually living here. So if Rākaiao was living here, then Ngāti Rangiti people were here. You know, so it's not, it's, it's that complexity of the whakapapa that makes up Ngāti Rangiti. So it's not like Ngāti Rangiti are here and here. They might be there under different names at the time because it's not like that hapu's name is made while the tipuna is alive. It's after they've passed away that you get the hapu name being used because they want to use that person as a significant ancestor. Um, so at the time that he's alive, they might have been known as something else. But after he died, then they became this, and then they ended up to be part of Ngāti Rangiti. But it's like we are Ngāti Rangiti that live here, and Ngāti Rangiti have, I would, the research would indicate clearly that Ngāti Rangiti <coughs> have been here for a very long time. There's um, four pieces of research that show that Ngāti Rangiti um, in some form were here in 1860. So long before Kao Kaoroa, long before the eruption, you know, Ngāti Rangiti, you're here as Ngāti Rangiti. The second part of it is a piece of kōrero that um, talks about um, Te Rangi Takina. Now, Ngāti Awa um, gave Te Rangi Takina as a chief of Ngāti Awa. Now, two things. The first thing, Te Rangi Takina's pā was Te Matata, not Matata. So this was Te Awa Te Atua, not Matata. Te Matata Pā is down there. It's not here. So, you know, on the other side of, of, of you know, the Tarawera River, you know, that's, that's Te Matata. What's it, Greg Road? Yeah, just, just on the corner of Greg Road there on Thornton Road, that's Te Matata, that raised bit where the farmers now put a silage pits in there. Anyway, um, so he's the chief of that pa, not Te Awa Te Atua. So it's just sort of really understanding the context of those names. Um, at one point, Matata was called Richmond. So you see some of that. So when you're doing, when you're doing your research and you're you know, Googling, you know, it's good to know these other names for places. Um, when you're doing your research, you can actually then see, oh, Richmond, oh yeah, if I Google under Richmond, oh, there it is, they're right there. And you hadn't thought about that. Um, but yeah, so I mean that's the complexities. The other, the other thing of course is that um, the really strong connections to our relations around us um, and you know we weren't in a silo so you know we have very strong whakapapa links to the likes of Ngāti Manawa for example. I've talked about Ngāti Umatahi, the very strong links to Ngāti Umatahi, Ngāti Tarawhai and Ngāti Tarawhai and Ngāti Rangitihi actually are the predominant owners of Rurima, not Ngāti Awa and not anyone else, but Tarawhai, Umutahi and, and significantly Ngāti Rangiti are whakapapa in Rurima. So you want to talk about your Rohe Moana? Oh well, there you go. And you know, and, and, and some of your, your grandparents, you know, my father would go out fishing with them and I remember Dad telling me that my grandmother used to stand on the beach crying because he would go out, I can't think who the kuroa was, that he would go out and he had a little dinghy and they'd come back and they had about that much freeboard because the boat was so full of fish <laughs> and my father would be doing Titanic style, standing on the front going, yee as they come in on the surf and my grandmother's suit standing there crying with her hands on her face going, any moment that's going to go sideways <laughs> and my grandson's going to be dead <laughs> or my son's going to be dead. Um, but I mean, you know, I mean, that was the, that's a lot of the stuff that Dad had as a kid was going out with, you know, those was fishing especially and because of Whare Raupu, because he was whangai to her, um, even though she was his grandmother, he was whangai to her, um, you know, he spent a lot of time with her and, um, you know, we, um, Kia ora Te Whanau Coffin, um, the, the um, Pātu, my grandmother and Auntie Rosie Coffin, they were good mates, 
and I've got lots of kōrero about Auntie Rosie <laughs> um, from Dad. Um, but I mean, you know, it's kind of like it's really cool for me to be standing here listening to all of you introduce yourselves because then I can connect through my father because it wasn't really me that's lived here, it was my father and his brothers, but connecting through those kōrero that my dad gave me back to all of you. So that's really awesome. So if I can say we might have a break now. And then when we come back, over morning tea, have a bit of a corridor amongst each other. I'm, I'm keen to introduce Kerry into the mix um, because a lot, of, a lot of the connections between all of us, Kerry has those intimate connections with his kui. Um, and so um, let's do that after morning tea. Okay, the play? Yeah.